So what he's doing is not only spraying, but he's putting a skin on there, a vapor skin. And it goes tight to the stud, tight to the sheeting. Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the green energy revolution that's already underway. David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. This week we share with you the very unsexy secret of how super energy efficient net zero home builders use insulation to provide half the heat needed for a home. Stick around and learn more about spray foam, rigid foam, bat and blow in insulation and how they're used to make the most energy efficient home money can buy. We call it Insulation 101. Hi, I'm Peter Amarongan with Habitat Studio. We specialize in energy efficient houses. We built some of the first net zero energy houses here in Edmonton, Canada's net zero energy capital. I think as everybody knows, insulation is, is uh, necessary to, to keep the cold out. We're using more insulation because we're trying to keep the total amount of energy down. Uh, you know, greenhouse gas emissions are a direct relationship of using fossil fuels to heat our houses. And the, the higher levels of insulation reduce the emissions from our houses and save us all kinds of money in, in purchasing the fuel to heat our houses. The effectiveness of insulation is gauged through an R value, which is a measure of thermal resistance. Higher R value means more insulation. R30, for example, loses heat twice as fast as R60. So what R values are we looking for in a super energy efficient home? The kind of levels that, that we've found to, to work through the optimizing that we've done, we, starting from the top of the house, we, we would have somewhere around R80 or R90 in the, in the roof. The walls would be about R40. The windows would be about R8. In the basement, frost walls would be somewhere around R36 to R38, and we'd have about R16 under the basement slab. We're putting in about double what is going into the typical cold-built house and about four or five times more than would be in a house from the 50s. And does that mean rule of thumb that you're, you need half the energy or does it work that way? It works exactly that way. If the R value of your wall doubles, the amount of energy you're losing is cut in half. When you picture insulation, the first thing that comes to mind is probably the standard fiberglass pink or yellow bat insulation. That's the fluffy, itchy stuff that comes in bats or rolls in a variety of materials such as fiberglass, mineral wool, plastic and natural fibers. Bat insulation would be used mainly in walls. It'd be the most common uh, type of insulation in, in most houses, including most new houses. The fiberglass insulation is the most economical, but it, it's, very, it's hard to install perfectly, and so there are always a few little gaps around it, and these little air currents kind of degrade the, the performance of it. Mineral wool uh, insulation is a little more expensive, it's a little denser, higher R value per, per inch, and uh, does a little better job of, of filling all of the gaps. That insulation is still used in super energy efficient net zero homes, but increasingly net zero builders are using blow-in insulation in those 12 to 16 inch super energy efficient walls. Blow-in insulation consists of little bits of cellulose, fiberglass or mineral wool, which are, you guessed it, blown into ceilings and walls to fill every little space. It's also blown into cavities. Uh, and we blow it into our exterior walls. Um, it, it does a better job than, than bats of filling all the little nooks and crannies and stopping airflow in that wall, particularly the cellulose. And, um, you know, we'll end up with this full one foot thick sweater wrapping around the whole house. And you can see this, the spaces in between the studs would be filled. So there's minimum amount of of heat transfer through the wood because it, compared to insulation, wood is actually a, a conductor of energy. Peter's last point is very important. Many net zero home builders use double two by four walls that are 12 to 16 inches thick. This minimizes wood to wood contact and thermal bridging further reducing heat loss. Another increasingly common form of insulation is rigid foam insulation. 
This is an example. This would be uh, expanded polystyrene. Uh, it also comes in a extruded version that's got a slightly higher R value per inch. And you can get board insulations made of urethane, essentially polyisocyanurate. And it has the highest R value per inch. We use a lot of foam insulation in our basements uh, of the board type. We insulate under the basement floor and uh, in the inner part of the, or the outer part of our basement walls with um, ex expanded polystyrene. It's about uh, R4 per inch and this formulation of it is, is moisture resistant and is okay to bury in the ground and, and to be exposed to the moisture that you can sometimes get in, in your base of frost walls. Rigid foam insulation in the floor butts up to foam insulation in the wall and presto, no air gaps, no thermal bridging and an air tight warm home. Our last type of game changer insulation is more like something out of science fiction. Spray foam insulation has really helped builders seal up new super energy efficient homes. Fiberglass insulation won't stop airflow. It's basically, if you think about your furnace filter, that's, that's kind of not very dense. And you know, that, that'll just clean the air. So fiberglass must be used with some other type of air barrier, but the, the spray foam is an air barrier and insulation in one product. We use spray foam when we need a high R value in a relatively thin space. We also use it to some degree for giving us additional air tightness. Air tightness is a critical part of energy conservation. It's just as important as, as insulation. A house that's highly insulated but still leaky will find that the biggest single component is, is air leakage. Spray foam insulation is perfect for sealing up every little nook and cranny that's hard to seal with regular insulation. Some modular net zero builders are using spray foam in their wall systems to get more insulation per unit area and to really seal up the home. And we would also be aiming for an air tightness level of about 0.6 uh, air changes an hour with the lower door test. Air leakage gets to be very, very important. A rule of thumb is that net zero ready homes will have less than one air exchange per hour. Once you achieve this and pair it with a new heat recovery air exchange system, you will have saved half the energy you need to heat your home. This means the furnace can be smaller, and in fact, it could be an electric air source heat pump furnace that is solar powered. That's it for our look at insulation, the most important part of the home energy efficiency equation. Want to know more about insulation or net zero homes? Check out our blog, photo gallery and podcast at greenenergyfutures.ca. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. Insulation is critical to building a super energy efficient home. Click here to learn more about building a net zero energy home. That's a home that produces as much energy as it consumes.